I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Do your own research. Consult a professional investment advisor before making any investment decisions. This show is for entertainment only. Faites vos propres recherches. Here we are. In another episode. And the Simple Success Podcast. And this is Financial Life Coaching from a Happiness Perspective. Why is there this constant talk from you about only being with people who uplift you? You mean people who call forth your best? Yeah, those people. Oh, that's a quote from the ancient Roman philosopher Epictetus. And the that's good idea? Oh, that. That's what W. Clement Stone would say lots of times when he was faced with challenges or seemingly insurmountable odds. That calls for a radical mind shift, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And here is a great example from this great American businessman and philanthropist. So, you've got a problem? That's good. Because repeated victories over your problems are the rungs on your ladder of success. Is that all? No, it's not. W. Clement Stone added that with each victory, you grow in wisdom, stature, and experience. You become a better, bigger, more successful person each time you meet a problem and tackle and conquer it with a positive mental attitude. What I hear is that I should stop running away from problems or treating them like they are an inconvenience. If you run away from your problems, you'll end up running for the rest of your life. That's a mental prison term. Why? Problems are a part and parcel of life. Most times when problems come, they come to get you out of your comfort zone. If you don't have problems, then most probably you're not living your life to the fullest extent of your design capacity. I always thought it would take a whole lecture to change my life, but I have noticed that it can take just two words to change my world. That's a great observation. From the surface, that's good. Doesn't seem to be much more than words you mutter without thinking. But if you consciously and constructively apply them to your situations and circumstances, I think I'll start watching my words. You better. And don't just watch the words you verbalize, but also your inner dialogue. The things you say to yourself, consciously or not, matter a great deal. You don't know how much you've challenged me. W. Clement Stone challenged people to have some introspection. Stop and think about it for a moment. Do you know of a single instance where any real achievement was made in your life or the life of any person in history that was not due to a problem that the individual faced at the time? Not any that I can think of. Seems like unusual terms, but I guess we do all have to overcome sometimes. Nothing I don't think. No, nothing. Everyone has problems. This is because you and everything in the universe is in a constant process of change. Do I have to change? What if the risk assessments are okay? Sometimes change seems so unnecessary. Change is an inexorable natural law. What is important to you is that your success or failure to meet the challenges of change is dependent upon your mental attitude. There you go again, talking about my mental attitude. You can read me like an open book. You can direct your thoughts and control your emotions and thus regulate your attitude. You can choose whether your attitude will be positive or negative. What do you mean, regulate my attitude? I thought my attitude regulated me. You thought wrong. It's up to you, always. Allowing your attitude to regulate you is akin to letting your dog lead you on its leash. I can picture that. It's a sorry sight, I must say. I am taking words right out of the mouth of W. Clement Stone. He stated that you can decide whether you will affect use, control, or harmonize with the changes in yourself and your environment. I have always wanted to choose my destiny. You can own your destiny, DT. When you meet the challenges of change with a positive mental attitude, you can intelligently solve each problem with which you are confronted. I have been meeting challenges with fear. I guess it's time for some radical change. Be sure to take careful notes so you can keep making it better. I will. I will. But how do I meet a problem? with a positive mental attitude. When you're faced with a problem that needs a solution, regardless of how perplexing it may be, the first thing to do is to ask for guidance from infinite intelligence. Okay, 
Sounds good, I think. And what should I do next? Engage in thinking time to solve your problems. Remember that every adversity has the seed of an equivalent or greater advantage for those who have a positive mental attitude. I'll always remember that. Is there anything I need to state? Yes, there is. State the problem. Analyze and define it. State to yourself enthusiastically, that's good. And then challenge yourself to go find the good. That's good. Yes. And then ask yourself specific questions such as, what's good about it? Oh, yeah. You mean what you said. Say it's good and then find out why later. Yes, I do mean that exactly. What's another example question? Here's one. How can I turn this adversity into a seed of an equivalent or greater advantage? Or how can I turn this liability into a greater asset? Now I see where I've been getting it wrong. I've been asking myself crippling questions. Crippling questions will give you crippling answers. Keep searching for answers to these questions until you find at least one answer that can work. That's easy. I can do this. Can I tell you the questions I'll ask myself? Well, practice is good, and I would love to hear them. So keep them close while we enjoy... Break number one. Hello, everyone. This is John with the Simple Success Podcast, financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Because we know you want to show us some serious love in return for the tremendous benefits you get from us, please subscribe to us in your favorite podcast player. You can find us on both the App Store and the Play Store because our message is for everyone. Leave a rating for us or even better, tell a friend. Whichever you choose, thank you so much for helping us do this for you. To leave us a written message, which just might lead to more in a future podcast, go to those same written show notes to find our subreddits. There is also our Facebook group page, Twitter, and other ways which we'll tell you about from time to time. You can also find an Easter egg every so often, so listen closely. Thank you again, and keep those constructive ideas coming. Whenever I was mentally strained at work, I would tell myself to man up. It's only recently that I have known that this is a mental issue. You're right. So many things are coming to the fore about the importance of mental health in the workspace. What's the correlation between a positive attitude and mental health? Studies have shown that positive thoughts can increase life expectancy and lower rates of depression, anxiety, and stress. It seems like a walk in the park, so... Why do some people find it hard to have positive thoughts? For some, it's what they have been used to for a long time, more the entirety of their lives. It's hard to change ingrained mindsets. You can do it, but it's hard. The strange thing is that the person may not even know they have negative thoughts. To them, it's normal. You mean that can happen? I'm starting to suspect myself, which is why I ask. Yeah, that happens a lot. You go through life with a dark cloud hanging above your head, others will see it and try to avoid it. Or me, or it. That's true. And you start wondering what's wrong with them while you're the problem all along. That's why I try to surround myself with people who aren't afraid to tell me the truth. We all need those types of friends. And who has the pleasure of having us set them up here today? That would be Dr. Kimby Marinakos, who prefers Kimby, by the way, rather than a full formal title. She is a board-certified family nurse practitioner and behavioral health specialist. Welcome, Dr. Kimby. We're so glad to have you on the podcast. Hello, Kimby. Glad to have you here with us today. Hey, John, I'm Dr. Kimby Maranakis. I'm a board-certified family nurse practitioner and behavioral health specialist in Charleston, South Carolina. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to give us more information about behavioral health, specifically, what, what, what should we know? Sure. So my expertise is burnout and compassion fatigue and moral distress and all of those buzzwords that are coming up now, particularly after the COVID-19 pandemic and coming through finding our new normal and how it's affecting the way we live and the way we work. As you know from listening to this, 
we're trying to reverse thought patterns about anything that might keep somebody away from a successful mindset. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So burnout, while the World Health Organization um, considers burnout or conceptualizes burnout as an occupational phenomenon characterized by three dimensions, uh, depersonalization, exhaustion, and a diminished sense of accomplishment or achievement. I personally think of burnout as more of a cultural norm in how we work. And that's something where, that I think that the, the pandemic actually just gave us an opportunity to start talking about it and hopefully stop normalizing burnout and the components of burnout, those three dimensions that over time will exhaust us and lead to that diminished sense of accomplishment accomplishment and achievement and really that disconnect from our work that robs us of having a fulfilling career and a, uh, a more of a, a uh, fulfilling experience in our life overall. I talk a lot about goals and having them and focusing on them and taking them all of that little bit about, you know, how to eat an elephant one bite at a time. It's, my, my goals are not like lifetime goals necessarily, but they all add up to that. I, mean, I, I often tell my clients and my audience that they are the first bite, that systemic change is actually an inside job, and that if they will make even small but significant changes on the individual level, it does ripple out and impact the whole. So there's a lot more that an individual can do to impact us culturally than they realize. We often think it's too big of a problem to overcome. It's too big of an elephant. But if you really, really dial it in and look at what I can do on an individual level to change the way I engage with this broken system, then we can make some changes over time. It will impact the whole. Did you Have you done any of these exercises yourself? Oh, absolutely. This came about as a result of my own devastating burnout, experiencing that on the front lines of urgent care through the pandemic. I found myself disconnecting from the work and emotionally, physically, spiritually exhausted, and also starting to doubt myself and my career choice after 20 very successful years in healthcare. I was doubting that I was doing the right thing. And I had a patient encounter one evening that really served as a wake up call. And that sent me on a mission to create a step-by-step -step system to bring myself up and out and through burnout. And in so doing, I created this system and have made it available more generally to help other people, as I know that after 20 years in healthcare and in behavioral health, I've got some therapeutic resources that the average person doesn't have. So how would listeners follow up with you when they want to get more information? Sure. They can visit my website, which is drkimby.com. And on that website, you can learn more about me. There's a link to schedule a free consult to see if there's a way that I can be of help or support. And there's also links to download the app that I created with that step-by-step -step system to eliminate burnout. What's the app's name? It's called Burnout Breakthrough. Burnout Breakthrough. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Gimby. You're so welcome, John. Thanks for having me. So what caught you most from what Dr. Kimby said? I like what she said about burnout and finding my new normal and how I work. Burnout is a cultural norm, especially with the pandemic and how it has made people shift how they work. The pandemic has changed how we work and burnout has been at an all time high. Yeah, the other day I was talking to a business owner who told me how he had to readjust. He gave me several insights into burnout. I would like you to share some of those thoughts. But first, break number two. We know a lot about you already because we know ourselves. For example, we know that you know how to listen to our podcast. We also know that you probably know how to subscribe. So as soon as you're done with that, tell us your story. We have ways you can contact us. It involves a special link where you can leave us a message. We may have an email address for you as well in the future, and we'll let you know if that happens. The reason for subscribing? I thought you'd never ask. When you subscribe, you automatically download all future episodes of that podcast. It just happens in your player without you having to go search again. How cool is that? This means better rankings for the podcast, more attention from advertisers, and more money. And this means more and better stuff for you. So your motivation is simple and easy. Subscribe to day, whatever app, and from whatever place you like. And don't just try to subscribe. There is no try. There is only do. We're changing the way we look at things, and remember, that's good. 
Eso es bueno, Sebo. Also remember, this is financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Coaching happiness. Our call to action is right in the show notes. Find it and you win too. You started by making me kick my negative attitude out the door. I'm glad to have been of help. If you need more kicks, know that my steel-toed boots are ready. I will. Now, if you can help me tie in the investing thing, I'll be good to go. Certainly, my friend. First thing is that success or failure in investing is tied to your thinking. As a man thinketh, so is he. That seems to be such a small thing. I always thought that the biggest thing is seed capital. Now you're telling me it's something else. Don't get me wrong. Liquid capital is pretty important. But if you have an inexhaustible supply of capital, but you're thinking negatively, you can't go far in business. Successful business leaders have cited positive thinking and optimism as a strategy for succeeding in work and life. What's the power of positive thinking? The power of positive thinking is leaving yourself open to success and happiness. Positive thinkers can avoid negative thoughts and self-criticism. Risk scores. You started by saying that the people I surround myself with can affect my inner man. Yeah, the Epictetus thing. Yeah, that. Does this mean... I should drop some people out of my circle? That's a good question, and a lot of people struggle with that. Many successful people are careful about the people they surround themselves with because they know that thoughts and attitudes are easily transmissible. What should I do to always stay positive? If you have to, don't be afraid to cut some links with some people, and while you're at it, build new ones. I'm afraid to do that because some of my friends won't take it well. They'll think... Success has got inside my head. Whatever you do, people will always have opinions, and you can't stop that. But don't let people's opinions and perceptions stop you from doing what's right for your business. I guess I'll have to grow a thick skin. Yeah, that'll help. You'll also need to have confidence. Imagine the confidence it took W. Clement Stone to utter those two words, That's That's good. good, in the face of problems. That must have taken tons of confidence. And practice. We all have confidence. It's only a matter of practicing and then manifesting it. How are positivity and resilience related? Studies have shown that positivity can help you become more resilient. Very few entrepreneurs make it big with their first idea or business venture. There are often many failures and mistakes behind a prosperous business, whether we're talking about private companies or public commercial companies. What else? Always look for something good in a bad situation. Remember that what you look for is what you will get. But it's not just about looking, though, is it? It's not just looking, but also assuring yourself that, in W. Clement Stone's words, that's... That's good. Good. What if some people think I've lost my mind, and they say I am refusing to accept reality? Many top entrepreneurs and investors have, at one time in their lives, been branded as mad. In somebody's perspective, at least, every scientist is a mad scientist. While others saw chaos, these brave folks saw opportunity. I want to be counted among the brave. You can, DT. Being counted among the brave is not Mission Impossible. What mindset should I have about failure and obstacles? People who succeed don't plan for failure. Instead, they plan for obstacles. They know that there will be challenges. They know they will need to find solutions, but they move on and do what they can do. There's a great Henry Ford story about that that I can tell you later. Plan for obstacles? That's new to me. How do I even do that? Instead of planning on dealing with defeat, master skill sets that will prepare you for the worst. Tell yourself over and over again, I will figure it out no matter what, and you will do just that. Okay, my new mantra is, I will figure it out no matter what. Way to go, DT. People who achieve big things in their lifetime operate under the assumption that every mistake is a lesson. They don't get bogged down making themselves feel bad for a misstep. Whenever I feel bad about a misstep, I become afraid to make another step. I almost become paralyzed. Don't punish yourself for doing something wrong. Take everything in stride. Keep moving in a positive direction. How should I look at my mistakes? Calling something a mistake is counterproductive. Call it learning instead. But sometimes learning is expensive. Which is all the more reason why you should hold them closer to your chest. In investing, expensive learning can be a rung that takes you up or down depending on your mental attitude. 
Talking to myself doesn't mean I'm crazy. Many successful individuals, like Will Smith, Tony Robbins, and Oprah Winfrey, understand that talking to yourself is crucial for living a happy and successful life. Yeah, it is. I've done that a lot in a way of rehearsing some things. I think we're created to constantly be in communication with others, the environment, infinite intelligence, or ourselves. Because of this, successful people actively make efforts to positively talk to themselves every day. Tous les jours. The key is to talk to yourself in the right way. Unfortunately, most people talk to themselves in the wrong way. What's the right way to talk to yourself? Instead of saying, I've never done it before, I'll start saying it's an opportunity to learn and do something new. Repeatedly and persistently. Which is how you've all gotten good. Gracias por escuchar. Salut. A la prochaine. This podcast and our other podcast are productions of Little Red Hen Industries. The supporting cast who helps me bake the bread includes Techno King, John C. Brandy, Alter Ego, Doubting Thomas, Fact Checker, A Small Brown Beef Animal, Seriously, Tiny. Facts are important but are also easy. Social Manager, Abraham Lincoln, Media Expert, Augustus Caesar, Psychologist, William James, Sound Designer, Adobe's Creative Suite, Spanish Consultant, Cameron J.K. Brandy, French Consultant, Leah, The Do Your Own Research Lady, Videographer, Eto Moon Koshki, Audio Props, Les Paul, Inspiration, many podcasts and other sources and of course Napoleon Hill. We also have websites and you can subscribe to both podcasts. You can even send us a video, audio or text message. But of course, you'll have to head to the show notes either on your phone or on the web to get the links and stuff. All the clickable links are in the show notes. And before we forget, the artificial intelligence or AI voices you hear in our work come from Google, Amazon Polly, and open AI like we say in the show notes. We just love what AI can do when lovingly crafted. Finally, you can find us on protmatch.com, matchmaker.fm, podbooker and podcast guests where we consider guests and consider guesting on other people's shows. And really finally, the music for our pods comes from Cute by Ben Sound and from Piano Background by Nick Simon Adams, as well as from AI MuseNet. The sound effect credits go to Jackson Academy Ashmore, Kanusi G. Dr. Jekyll, Joe Payne, Everything Sounds, MK Play More Stories, ERH, Sand Emotions, Big Pickle 51, and Just Kidding, yes that's his or her name, all on freesound.org, also, language is other bomb. Paul.